welcome to Sweet Tomato Vine Homestead. I'm Linda, and today I am out in my garden about to harvest my garlic because the garlic is telling me it's ready to be harvested. I'm gonna show you how it shows you when it's ready to be harvested. I had really said I was gonna wait till like the first week of June or even maybe the second week of June, but this garlic is dying back. If you can see these first leaves at the bottom, they have gotten brown. And then I've got a lot of yellowing on these leaves up here at the top. So the garlic is ready to be harvested. If I keep leaving it in there, it'll only just start rotting in the ground. So I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it. And so I got a table over here that I'm gonna be putting it on. And I'm just gonna be putting it on this table to show it to you all. But this table is going to be, I'm gonna make two trips and I'm gonna put the uh, garlic here. Then I'm gonna have to take the garlic. I'll put it in my wagon and take it and the table to the garage, but I'm gonna pile it up on this table first. So y'all, let's get started. Okay, and some of them have started to split. This one right here has split open. So I may be already, when this, this one looks pretty bad too. So I may have uh, got, should have gotten this out earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get it right now. Cause what my plan was to try to grow enough garlic so that I would not have to be at the store purchasing garlic. And I'm going to be letting this dry out in my garage. I'm going to try to uh, shake as much of the soil off and put it back into my bed because I need my soil. So this is what these heads are looking like. Okay, y'all, I estimated that we probably use up a head of garlic each week. And there are 52 weeks in a year. So I stopped about right here counting 52. So I have over a year supply of garlic. And it will be used in all different ways, uh, mostly in just chopping up and cooking. But I will also be using it when I can because I put garlic in some of my uh, canning jars where I can uh, pickle okra and some of my other uh, recipes call for garlic also that I can and so water bath canning and so those uh, should take us a long ways so I am going to take these now and put them into the garage so it's gonna take a minute because I gotta move the car out and I gotta set the table up. Then I gotta come back and get the wagon and take all of this to the car. So we're supposed to be getting some rain. I think I wanna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and harvest those, uh, put one uh, container of potatoes because I don't want this stuff to sit out here and the potatoes are 
uh, looking like they are ready to be harvested. Also, one of my containers, and that's the that's the Adirondack blue potatoes are looking like they're ready to be harvested. I'm going by the looks of the uh, potato uh, plant. So let me show you what I'm talking about. And to get them to cure properly, you want to stack them where they're not stacked on top of each other. You want these, each one of these heads to have some space to dry out. You don't want them all just stacked up on top of each other. So that is why I am stacking them this way. Because this is the best way that I can uh, stack them to get as much use out of this small table and my small space in here that I have. And if you are planning on storing your garlic, you do not want to wash your soil off. You want to go ahead and just let them dry out and uh, let this paper that is on here, which is like a skin that is on the uh, garlic, you want it to dry out. And it's going to be protection for your garlic while it is in storage. Okay, y'all, so this is my garlic harvest, and I am very thankful because this is the best garlic harvest that I have ever had. And y'all, I have found out that wringing these onions can be back-breaking work. And so what I decided I was gonna do is not bend over at all when I'm wringing my onions. I just put my hose on the jet spray and go around the base of the onion and push the soil from around it. And I have found it, it is working really good. So you might want to try to bring your onions with the jet spray on your hose. Just be careful not to remove too much of your coating around the bottom that protects your onions during storage. So you want to be careful, you know, not to do that. But this would be a good way to get that ringing going, you know, get it started. Y'all, it's really uh, hot and dry out today, so I'm going to give my worms just a little moisture to their bed. Okay, so this is what the Adirondack blue potatoes are looking like. They have started to die back. I, you see I got some crunchy leaves right here, and then I got leaves on here that... Uh, I put on top and so I'm going to go ahead and see although those are not completely dead but they have started to die back so I'm going to go ahead and harvest these potatoes and get this container so that I can plant something else in it okay so I'm going to use this tarp that I got from the Dollar Tree family dollar Dollar Tree Combo, and I am going to just sit them on here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pull these leaves out. Go ahead and remove the potato leaves first. Okay, here was one just looking like it was just starting to grow. Okay, I'm going to get my wagon.
And y'all, uh, these potatoes are very, very fragile. When you first harvest them, the skin is very thin on them. Matter of fact, that is when they are most delicious to me. They, I love to eat them just like they are right now. Just uh, take them in and peel them and cook them. And the skins, you, the skins be so soft sometimes, you can almost peel them with your finger, with your fingernail or a butter knife. And they are fresh like this. But um, sometimes you want to store them. But this is a small container. So I don't know how much storing these are going to get. These are probably going to be eaten really soon. Okay, I see there are some ants in this container. And I think I put three or four potatoes into this container when I plant it. I do have my little trial, my trial, I don't wanna, I want the ants to get me. There are some ants in here. This is gonna be some good soil to use for another project real soon. Matter of fact, uh, probably use it today. Got some little tiny ones in there. They're gonna probably fall through my wagon. Biggest one at the bottom. I know some of these got to be seed potatoes, but I'm not identifying them right now. Maybe they, oh, they probably was on the ends of the plants. I still don't remember seeing them. And these are the uh, under Adirondack blue, but they are really purple potatoes. And I was wanting to make sure that I planted some of these to get those anthocyan. So there is, well, here's another one. Okay, I found the seed potato there. It's decayed. And I think that that is all. Oh, wait, there's another one. Another baby. 
Okay. That's not really bad. Not bad at all. I am going to go through this kind of gently. And y'all got some good soil right here that has ants in it. So I do have some diatomaceous earth over here that I can put on this soil to try to, but maybe if I leave it right there and the sun shines on it, they'll go ahead and just uh, vacate the premises. Remember, these potato plants are not edible. Unlike the sweet potato vine, they are edible, but these potato plants are not edible. They are toxic. Okay, y'all, so this is my Adirondack Blue potato harvest for today. So I'm very happy and pleased with it and with my garlic harvest. And those two will make a good combination. And so we'll be doing those onions real soon. There's not too many things I like more than potatoes with onions and garlic. So I hope that you all have enjoyed this video today and that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.